Hi, this is Matt Ellington from Accelerator BI. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use some very simple SQL code to improve your Power Pivot workbooks. So here I have two workbooks. Let me first of all show you the uh, this master one. I have lots of measures here that I've built over time, and um, I don't want to keep rebuilding those measures for each time I create a new workbook. So what I've done is I've created this master workbook and uh, each time I create a new measure I create it first of all in this workbook. Now the problem with this workbook, if I just close this one down, is that this workbook is 383 meg. It's actually got 40 million rows of data and sometimes you want to produce a report that has a subset of data, maybe just for a few products or for a, a short period of time. And, uh, and so the, this is an example of a report that I've done on just a, a six or eight products for a particular client. And you can see that this one's only 800K, uh, which is obviously much more usable. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that using the AdventureWorks database. So I have, a, um, I have a workbook here, which I'm going to use. I'll open it up and it's got 2.4 meg, uh, but the, the principle is still the same. And so here we have a, uh, a simple pivot table that's got sales for all products. But what if I just wanna have a look at say, these handful of products here and create a new workbook? So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save a copy of the workbook. Then I'm going to highlight these products. I'm just going to take a copy. These are the ones that I want to include in my, my new report. Now I do have a, a little macro that I've recorded, which I'll make available on my website. And so if I come to my macros, it's called um, combine commas SQL code. And what I've done here is I've selected the products that I want. I just hit run on this macro. And what it does is it creates this little piece of um, SQL code, which I'm going to include in my um, in my Power Pivot uh, data load. So, okay, so if I now go to Table Properties, you'll see that this table has been imported from um, from Access, and uh, it's just using the standard import routine. I'm now going to switch from Table Preview to the Query Editor, and this is the standard. SQL code that's been written by Power Pivot to go and fetch the data from Access. It's a little bit hard to read, so I'm going to copy this and go to this website called Instant SQL Formatter. I'm just going to paste the code in here and format it. And then I'm going to copy and paste it back in here. So now it's a little bit easier to read and you can see that it's got a simple select statement and it's selecting all of these different products from, um, from my sales table. And now what I'm going to do is I want to limit the selection to be just the products that I showed you before. So I'll just jump back here. I've got my little um, in statement, which I'll copy from here. And so now I can just add a simple where clause where I need the name of the product key, here it is here, where product key, and then paste my little where clause where my product key is all of these. I can hit validate. Um, I'm also just going to copy this line of code because I'm going to use it again in a minute. Go copy and save. And now my 60,000 records will be re-imported and now it's just records for those particular products. That's so down to 3000 records. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my products table and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So same process, go to the table properties, change this to query editor. I'm not going to bother with the formatting. I'm just going to paste the same where clause, validate, click save. And now my product table has only the nine products in it. And I'm going to save my workbook. Now you can see that this pivot table only returns those products that I have in my data set. If I close that down and have a look, you can see that my original file was 2.47 
and my new file is 1.47. This is of course test data as you saw before when I did this on my production data my original workbook was 383 meg and it went down to under 1 meg so it's a very uh, quick and easy process for uh, for minimizing the size of your workbooks.